In this video, we're going to make a dubstep style bass sound in Ableton Live using the Simpler instrument. So to get started, I'm going to go into Live's browser and drag the default Simpler preset into a track in Ableton Live. First thing we need is some kind of waveform to generate sound in our Simpler instrument. Now most of the dubstep bass sounds I've heard use square waves or sometimes square waves of pulse width modulation, or even square waves with a sawtooth wave stacked up with it. Here I'm going to be using a hybrid square wave sawtooth wave that I pulled from a machine drum. There should be a link along with the video to where you could download this sample from. I recommend downloading it so you could follow along. Now I'm going to go into Live's file browser, browse to the machine drum sample I mentioned, and drag it into the simpler instrument. Now let's arm the track and turn on the loop button in Simpler and play back a few notes to hear what it sounds like so far. Alright, so I think we have a nice basis for a dubstep bass sound so far. Next thing we want to do is add a filter to the sound. So I'm going to turn on filter and I'm going to add a 12 decibel per octave bandpass filter. Most of the time when people are making bass sounds, they'll go straight for the low pass filter. But for this dubstep sound, I'm going to use the bandpass filter instead because it's going to produce a more dramatic effect than the low pass filter. I'm going to turn the filter frequency to somewhere around 100 Hz. I'm going to turn my filter envelope on and change the filter to envelope amount to around negative 20. This negative envelope amount is going to give us a little thump or pop in the beginning of our bass sound. Now playing some notes back, we can hear that we definitely have a bass sound. But we need one last thing to make it dubsteppy, the wobble. To make the wobble, I'm going to turn on my LFO and I'm going to switch the rate so that it syncs to live's clock. I'm going to change the rate to eighth notes and turn up the filter's LFO amount so the LFO modulates the filter's cutoff frequency. Now let's hear what we have. Alright, that's pretty good. There's a couple things I want to do to make it even closer to the sound I have in my head. I'm going to change the voices to one and turn the glide function on so we could glide from one note to the next. Alright, well that sounds pretty convincing to me. So now let's play around with some of the parameters in order to customize our sound further. So first I'm going to play around with the filters. Now I'm going to add a little velocity sensitivity so that the filter's frequency will get higher or lower depending on how hard I hit the key on my MIDI keyboard. Now I'm turning up the spread, which slightly detunes the left and right channels from each other and creates a nice chorusy sound. Now I'm just going to play a little with the filter envelope. Now let's map some MIDI controllers to our sound to give it some real-time playability. So I want to map my LFO and I'm going to go up in my browser and change it so the minimum speed it's going to go is 8th notes and the maximum is 32nd notes. That'll make it so it never goes too slow or too fast. I also want to map my LFO to filter amount and also my filter cutoff frequency. I'm going to jump out of MIDI map mode. And let's hear what we have. So I'm going to stop here, but I definitely recommend playing around with the sound a bit further and customize it to your liking. Some other things I'd recommend doing 
is to try out some different waveforms inside the Simpler. Also, if you own Sampler, try converting the instrument to a Sampler by right-clicking on the title bar of the instrument and choosing Simpler to Sampler. And then you can play around with all the extra parameters Sampler has to offer. So thanks for stopping by, and I hope you learned something from this video. Take care. Thank you.